वेलकम बैक टू करियर पावर हैदराबाद पावर बैट डॉट टू फर्स्ट समय स्टूडेंट्स लेट अस सी द इंपॉर्टेंट एमसीक्यूज बट बिफोर गोइंग इनटू द इंपॉर्टेंट एमसीक्यूज सो प्लीज सब्सक्राइब आवर YouTube चैनल फॉर मोर इंटरेस्टिंग कंटेंट एंड आल्सो जॉइन आवर टेलीग्राम चैनल सो दैट यू विल गेट द फ्री फ्री पीडीएफ अभी आल्सो लॉन्चड आवर न्यू करियर पावर हैदराबाद ऐप सो डू डाउनलोड द ऐप वी आर प्रोवाइडिंग द लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन सो वी प्रोवाइड कोचिंग प्रेजेंटली फॉर बैंक एसएससी आरआरबी सो यू नो बैंक एग्जाम्स आर कमिंग नियर सो दैट यू यू नीड ए टोटल होल टोटल प्रिपरेशन फॉर क्रैकिंग द बैंक और एसएससी एग्जामिनेशन सो वी प्रोवाइड कोचिंग ऑनलाइन कोचिंग इन आवर करियर पावर हैदराबाद ऐप सो डू डाउनलोड द ऐप सो नाउ लेट्स गो इन टू द इंपॉर्टेंट एमसीक्यूज सो इफ यू सी द फर्स्ट एमसीक्यू फॉर टुडे Uh, PM Modi has recently launched a Japanese style Zen garden in which are the following city so PM Modi has recently launched the Japanese Zen garden in which are the following city answer is Ahmedabad so PM Modi launches a Japanese style Zen garden and Kaizen Academy at the Ahmedabad management uh, association premises in Ahmedabad so it is uh, uh, the main uh, goal of PM Modi is to create a mini Japan in Gujarat state so zen garden contains uh, the japanese art culture land and ar- landscape architecture and also a statue of lord buddha so this uh, zen garden is built with the support of the japanese information study center and the indo japan friendship association and also with the hugo international association of japan so kaizen academy what is the meaning of kaizen kaizen means uh, improvement or continuous improvement not only improvement but continuous improvement so this kaizen program was introduced when pm modi was the chief minister of gujarat in 2004 it was very successful so this program led to the refinement of process leading to a positive impact on governance so he also implemented it when he was the prime minister of india also so which created good results also remember the gujarat chief minister vijay rupani and the governor of gujarat acharya devra so the next mcq rani sharnobat recently claimed gold medal in which event so rani sharnobat of india has recently claimed gold medal in which event answer is shooting so for the sport shooting she won gold medal in the 25 meter pistol event at the uh, international shooting sport federation world cup so she clinched the gold medal in the 25 meter pistol event and another indian shooter manu bakar he was uh, finished at the seventh position and rani Sar- rahi sarnobat she finished at the first position so this uh, world cup was held in korsia ozihik ozihik korsia so this is the last competition between the 2020 tokyo olympics and this uh, world cup was introduced by the international shooting sport federation in 1986 mainly to create a system of qualification to the olympic shooting competition so it's like a qualification to the olympic games the next mcq the united nations international day of parliamentarism uh, is commemorated on so the united nations international day of parliamentarism is commemorated on so the answer is 30th june so international day of parliamentarism is observed on 30th june so this day celebrates parliaments and recognizes the significance of the parliamentary systems of government this day acknowledges the importance of strong parliaments as a cornerstone of democracy representing the voice of the people passing laws implementing laws and making the government accountable so this day also marks the establishment of the inter parliamentary union which is a global co- organization of parliaments in 1889 so this inter parliamentary union is a world organization of parliaments which connects the national parliaments to promote transparency accountability and participation so which is headquartered in geneva and you know it is formed in 1889 so the next question where the international astroid day is observed annually on the international astroid day is observed annually on 30th june so international astroid day is observed annually on the 30th june mainly to raise awareness about the astroid impact hazard and to fee- empo- and you know, to inform the people about the crisis communication actions to be taken at the global level well there is any credible near earth threat so the last recorded and the largest recorded asteroid impact was in the russia serbia on 30 june 1909 1908 so that is why 30 june is observed as the international asteroid day so what are asteroids asteroids are nothing but rocky uh, sediments uh, which are left over during the formation of the solar system about 4.6 billion years ago so currently there is an estimate that there are 10 lakh asteroids they are mostly found between the orbits of mars and jupiter who revolve around the sun so they range from a small dimension of pebbles to 600 miles across so from small pebble small stone to a big 600 mile uh, area vast area so they are small than planets so that is why they are not considered as planets they are smaller than planets so that is why they are not considered as planets and they are generally called the leftover material of the solar system so the next question law minister union law minister 
Sri Ravishankar Prasad has recently launched the ITAT Edwar, an e-filling portal of ITAT Edwar, an e-filling portal of the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal. So ITAT abbreviates to the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal. So uh, Union uh, Law Minister Ravishankar Prasad has launched this ITAT Edwar. So it's an e-filling portal mainly for parties to uh, apply, to file their claims, uh, uh, appeals, documents, paper books, anything electronically. So this ITAT Edwar will provide accessibility, accountability, transparency in the working of the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal. So this Income Tax Appellate Tribunal is a quasi-judicial institution which is formed in 1941, which works under the Ministry of Law and Justice. So it has earlier branches at Delhi, Kolkata, Mumbai, but presently it has 63 benches. So this ITAT Edwar is considered as the mother tribunal because it is the first tribunal formed in India after uh, the like uh, uh, first tribunal formed in India so in 1941 so that is why it is considered as the mother tribunal so it mainly deals with the appeals uh, under the direct access act namely the income tax act of 1961 so the next question who becomes the first indian women cricketer to be handed over a four year ban after failing a dope test so who is that first indian women cricketer to be handed over a four year ban after failing dope test answer is anshala rao so Anshila Rao, she failed the dope test. She belongs to Madhya Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh all-rounder. She was handed over this ban by the National Anti-Doping Aid Agency. So she was uh, found of consuming a banded steroid, 19 noroandrosterin. So earlier also she was uh, found of uh, like using all these uh, steroids. So uh, she is an under, under 23 cricketer, mainly playing uh, the domestic matches which are organized by BCCI. She last took part in the 2019-2020 under 23 event. So some points about NADA, National Anti-Doping Agency, which is formed in 2005, headquarters in New Delhi, and it is mainly responsible for promoting, coordinating, and monitoring the doping control program in sports, in all the forms of sports in India. So it works under the uh, guidance of the WADA, World Anti-Doping Agency. So next comes, which uh, space agency will hire and launch the world's first physically disabled astronaut? So, which space agency will hire and launch the world's first physically disabled astronaut? The answer is European Space Agency. So, European Space Agency is developing technologies for the para-astronaut. So, they are, they, are, they are trying to give a message to the world that space is for everyone. So, their own rocket, the Ariane rocket, has a lot of competition today from the Elon Musk, SpaceX and Jeff Bezos Blue Horizon. So, Jeff Bezos is the Amazon founder and a billionaire. So he announced that he will be the first tech billionaire man to go into the space using his own rocket, Blue Horizon. So also see points about the European Space Agency, which is an intergovernmental organization of 22 member countries. And it is established in 1975 and headquartered in Paris. So the next question, who is the author of the book title, Anomalies in the Law and Justice? Anomalies in the Law and Justice answer is Justice R.V. Ravindran. So R.V. Ravindran is the author of this book. So this book is an attempt to explain the layman, the common man about the law and legal system which is still evolving and it requires more critical thinking. So the book covers all the procedural elements as well as the substantial law relating to the civil procedure, electoral reforms, alternate dispute resolution, dispute resolution mechanism. So this book, R.V. Ravindran's book explains about the justice system to every common man. So the next question, who has recently become the youngest Indian cricketer to make debut into all formats. So who has recently become the youngest Indian cricketer to make debut into all formats? Answer is Shafeli Verma. So Shafeli Verma is the youngest Indian cricketer to debut into all formats of cricket, ODI, Test and T20s. So she played her first ODI against England recently. And also she played her Test T20s at the age of 15 years to 39 days. And test match she played 11 days ago and uh, her ODI is at the age of 17 years, 150 days. So if you see the top 5 young cricketers to debut into all formats, Mujibur Rahman from Afghanistan, uh, he, he played at 17 years, 78 days. Shara Tyler from England at 70 years, 86 days. LC Perry of Australia at 17 years, 104 days. Mohammad Amir of Pakistan at 17 years, 108 days. Shafali Verma of India at 17 years, 150 days. So these are the top 5 youngest cricketers to debut in all formats. So next question, uh, which of the following country has recently been included in the grey list of financial action task force? So which country is recently included in the grey list of financial action task force? Answer is Philippines. 
So Philippines, Haiti, Malta, South Sudan. So all four were included in the grey list. So Financial Action Task Force is an intergovernmental body formed in 1989 during the G7 summit in Paris. The main object of the Financial Action Task Force is to combat money laundering, terror financing and all other related threats. So this secretariat is present in Paris and total members as of November 9, 37. And India is also a member of this Financial Action Task Force. So they generally have two lists. One is the grey list which are countries who are safe haven for supporting terror funding and money laundering and the blacklist where countries are supporting they are supporting terror financing and money laundering they are called the non-cooperative countries or territories so thrice a year the financial action task force plenary they will decide who is going into this list gray list and blacklist so the next question the first two units of world's second biggest hydroelectric dam the Baihitan dam has been constructed in which country so world's second biggest hydroelectric dam why Hithan Dam is constructed in which country? Answer is China. So China constructs uh, the second world's biggest dam on uh, the Jimsa River, which is a tributary of Angtis River. So mainly to curb the fossil fuel uh, demand. So this is a 289 meter tall dam containing 16 generating units uh, with each capacity of 1 million kilowatt each. So it is second in size of the, the Three George Dam, which is constructed in 2003 on the Angtis River, which has a capacity of 22.5 million kilowatts. So both of these dams were constructed by Three George Group Corporation and these Three George Group Corporation is the world's biggest investor in the hydro, solar, wind energies. So once operational, this dam will eliminate 20 million tons of coal annually. So China's capital Beijing, China's currency is Rangminbi. So please buy hard. So the next question, the center inaugurates Asia's longest and world's fifth longest high speed track nat tracks. So center inaugurates Asia's longest and world's fifth longest high speed track nat tracks in which city answer is indoor so in indoor uh, the union minister heavy of heavy industries and public enterprises prakash javdekar has inaugurated the nat tracks high speed track at pitampur which is near indoor so nat tracks national automotive test tracks so they developed this high speed track in 1000 acres with 11.3 kilometer track so it is a one stop solution for all the high performance tests mainly from two wheelers to heavy tractors so it is used to perform the maximum speed capability of high-end cars like BMW, Mercedes, Audi, Ferrari. So it has three semi-circular curves which can trust uh, uh, test vehicles at 250 kilometers without touching the steering and 375 kilometers having control on steering. So the next question for today, who has been appointed as the chairman of the Indian Federation of United Nations Association? Who has been appointed as the chairman of Indian Federation of United Nations Association? Answer is Sembunath Srivastava. So he is a former judge of the Allahabad High Court and the Lokayutta of Chhattisgarh. So the Indian Federation of United Nations Association is a non-governmental voluntary non-profit organization mainly working for international peace and understanding. The main aim of the body is to promote the objectives of United Nations. So it enjoys a special consultative status with the Economic and Social Council of the UN. It also runs an institute called the Institute of United Nations Studies which is established in 1969. And the institute conducts a six-month diploma course mainly on the United Nations and international understanding. So the last question for today, ICC Men's T20 World Cup originally slated in India will be shifted to which country? So ICC Men's T20 World Club which is to be conducted in India will be shifted to United Arab Emirates. So it is going to be conducted in United Arab Emirates. Uh, between uh, 17 October to 14 November 2021 at the Dubai International Stadium, Sheikh Jayad International Stadium, Sharjah Stadium and also at the Oman Cricket Academy Stadium. So, uh, in July 2020, ICC has announced that the 2020 and 2021 editions will be postponed due to COVID-19 pandemic. So, that's why the 2020 event shifted to 2021 and 2021 event shifted to 2022. It is Australia who should uh, host the 2021, but Australia and India, they exchange. Now, India is hosting in 2021, Australia will host in 2022. The first edition of the T20 World Cup was uh, hosted in South Africa and India was champions. And the last edition was hosted in 2016 in India and West Indies were the champions. Okay. Also remember points like the BCCI President Saurav Gangali, BCCI Secretary Jai Shah, BCCI formed in 1928, headquartered in Mumbai, ICC Chairman Greg, uh, Greg Barclay, ICC CEO Manu Sanwe, ICC formed in 1909 and ICC headquarters is in Dubai. So please uh, download our uh, Career Power app. So very, very, uh, like very, very useful. We are providing coaching for Bank SSE RRB. So if you like our content, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel. So this PDF is available in our Telegram channel. So please uh, 
download uh, our join our telegram channel so our offline classes are running at dilshuk nagar and amirpet so please uh, visit our branches or call our branches for further details so thank you very much we'll meet in the next class